Today we have two of the best robots on the market, the flagship from NEDO, American company, been around since about 2004, if you can see that. This is the NEDO D7 Connected. Uh, I've had this in my house for about two weeks and I've been comparing it with the new robot vacuum from the Chinese company Roborock. This is the newest model, the S4, which is the entry model uh, for the one for the company Roborock, which actually comes with the laser guided navigation system. The same thing that Nito uses to map your house and clean your house very efficiently. These are two excellent robots and what sets them apart is greater than $400. That's right, the Nito D7 retails for $829 and the Roborock S4 retails for $399.99. Both of these can be bought on Amazon. And at various times they go on sale, so sometimes you can get them a little bit cheaper. Uh, this one has just been released, and it's interesting because a lot of people are saying that this one actually vacuums better than the S5 and S6. Now, I've never owned the S5 or S6, so we're about to find out. What we're going to do is we're going to put these two vacuuming robots head-to-head -head in my foyer in here. And I've set up a gold mine of coffee. I love my coffee, not on the floor, but in a cup. But here we have it on the floor, and I've scattered it around table legs in the corner over there, some a bunch here in the middle along the wall. This should test these robots' ability to go ahead and see how much of it actually pick up. So at the end, this is actually half a cup of coffee. At the end, we're going to measure what it doesn't pick up. And subtract that from a half a cup and we'll let you know how well it does so we're gonna go ahead and get the s4 now clinging the foyer and we'll see what it can do so the s4 unlike the neato talks to you when it's doing things first you need to notice the biggest thing is the design for the two of them that's interesting i put that beside it so it's trying to come over here into the foyer and it, it can't. So in a minute it'll figure its way around and it'll come around this other robot and it'll come and make its way in here. Now I don't have the D7 on its dock. It's just sitting right there beside the Robo Rock. In a few minutes I'll put it on its dock and we'll run the same exact test. I will tell you that in between these tests we are thoroughly cleaning and mopping cleaning, meaning vacuuming the floor with our large vacuum cleaner and mopping, hand mopping the floor to sanitize it so that we get the most accurate results of what's going to come off of this floor. So here we go now with the Roborock S4. It's made its way into the foyer and it's making its first pass. I am going to be doing a in-depth review of both of these robots. Uh, in the next week or so, I'll be releasing a video head-to-head -head, letting you know what I think about these. I've done a good bit of research on vacuum robots over the last uh, month, I'd say. And uh, these are promising to be two of the best. And with over $400 retail setting these two robots apart, that, uh, that makes it hard not to purchase the Chinese Roborock S4, honestly. It is an excellent bot. I've spent uh, a little over a week with the Roborock, about two weeks with the Nito, and I'm impressed by both of these robots. I'll give you a more in-depth review in another video. This is simply me just putting the robots through their paces and trying to figure out which one vacuums at least hardwood floor or tile better. If you'd like to see me run a carpet test on either one of these robots, Drop a comment below. I'd like to know if you're interested in it. If, if you are, I may do a carpet test on both of these robots. So this is the Roborock S4. Retails for $399. You can see it uses a front side brush. You can see it's spinning really fast right there. That's made of a rubberized material. The Roborock S5, which has been out for a little over a year, uses standard bristles on this side brush. And the standard bristle side brush on the S5 has three legs with bristles on it. 
This has five with a rubberized bristle. It's supposed to be better for not tangling in cables, wires, and uh, it's supposed to last a little bit longer. We'll see about that. So far it's been doing uh, its job fairly well and it has um, not really gotten tangled in cords. Uh, nothing that's been its fault. One time we left the charging cable down for our phone and it decided that it wanted to drag it down across the room a little bit, but it didn't stop it and it let it go. So you can see here it's leaving a little bit, but the good thing about the these, most all of the vacuuming robots overlap their paths. That way if they miss something, as you can see here, it's overlapping its path. The way if it misses something, it has another opportunity to pick it up. And this is a real, honestly, a, an example of cleaning that most people won't be doing with their robots. This is an extreme case of a half a cup of coffee spilled on the floor. Most people would grab a broom and a dustpan and pick it up. But there's really no need. This thing getting under stuff like my hall tree here is a compelling argument for just letting it do the job. It might be able to get it up better than the broom, maybe? We'll see. Here's my cat, Momo, short for Cosmo. The cats are quite entertained by their robot vacuums, especially two of them running around my house for two weeks now. looks to be trying to get through those legs, but then realizing it can't. It should sort itself out, self out here in a minute. It usually takes a second for them to get their bearings and figure out to go a different direction. This is kind of interesting though. This is the first time I've seen it struggle for quite this long. There it goes. So I think it's safe to say that we're finished vacuuming along the wall over here. You can see what it left. It's also safe to say that it's done in the corner over here. And it is complete and going back to the dock. So I'll let you see here what all it left. And keep in mind this was a half a cup of coffee. I don't think it went over here at all. It was trying to come over here. So that is the results. And I'll give you the measurements from what was actually swept up and left over. And we'll sanitize the floor here in a few minutes and we'll be off with the Neato D7, see how well it can do against the Roborock S4. We have now swept up the remnants of the coffee and we're going to measure it and give you a measurement here in just a few minutes on the results of the Roborock S4 and how much of the half cup of coffee that I put down, how much did it end up leaving behind. And these are the results from the Roborock S4. Right here, as you can see, we have a one teaspoon size cup of coffee and we have a half cup. That was what was put on the floor, one whole half cup of coffee. And after we were done, this is what we ended up sweeping up out of the floor. We re actually removed the hall tree to make sure that we swept everything up. And you're looking at, I'd say, a little bit more than a half a teaspoon here of coffee that we ended up sweeping up. That's pretty darn good results. So now we're going to run the Neato D7 and see what it can do for picking up coffee, one half cup of coffee out of the same foyer. So we're gonna go ahead and spread that coffee around now and we'll be right back. And we are back with the Neato D7, the flagship model from the American company Neato. Can it keep up with the Chinese-made Roborock? We'll have to see. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing going and uh, it's gonna run the same foyer that 
the Rubber Rock S4 ran, and we're gonna see how well it ends up picking up the coffee grounds. So the Neato D7 does not talk to you like the Rubber Rock does. It makes kind of a dinging sound, which to me is just as effective. It is nice to, if you're close by, you can understand what the Robo Rock is saying, but if you're across the house, all you hear is just words being said. With this making different sounding chimes, you get used to hearing if it's just starting up and it's saying I'm successful, or if you're hearing a warning sound. So that's some of the, some of the differences between the two is how it lets you know if it's in trouble. The Robo Rock does it by voice, the Neato here does it by chimes. I'm going to be doing a full length review on both of these robots pretty soon so you'll get to see what I think about the overall performance, cleaning power, how well the technology is, how well the software works. You'll get the full review from me pretty soon. I wanted to make sure I had some time to live with them in my house and I've been cleaning my entire house with them every night sending one robot out and then sending another robot right after it so the Neato D7 has got a lot to live up to a lot of people think that these uh, the D-shaped bot uh, the flat front is the most efficient for getting up against walls and uh, I, I'm not positive. The way the round Robo Rock works is very efficient and it doesn't leave anything. It, uh, it does a really good job. So we'll see how well. I'm going to go ahead and pause and we'll pick back up in a second when this is finishing up its run. Let's see it. Watch it here get along the wall. As you can see, the way it navigates, it tends to not get against the wall real well. Uh, this is my second Neato D7. The first one uh, was prone to issues, navigation issues, and also the side brush here. It's got a little small side brush that it spins up and spins down at times, especially in the floors. It's spinning right now. That little side brush, the belt is belt driven, and the belt flipped off mine day number one. So I ended up sending that back to Amazon. Uh, that, along with the software being glitchy and it not be able to find its base, running all over the house, doing weird things, putting it on the base and it telling you that it's not on the base. Uh, I send it back and I've had less glitchiness with this one, which is great. So I can do a very good equal comparison against the much cheaper Roborock S4. I'm gonna pause right now. So the Neato D7 is finished and uh, you know, one of the design design ideas behind the d-shaped robot is that well it's square your room is square and so that means it can get up to the edges of your room and the corners and around stuff much more effectively and i can tell you right now that uh is is, is not the case here as you see and i've noticed this with the d7 when it comes along a wall it'll come in like this and kind of swoop in and make no attempt to come back and get this so anytime it's starting on a wall, it will come in like this and then get real close. As you can see right here, it picked up everything along this wall, but left this. And over here into the corner, for some reason, it didn't pick it up at all. And it's already mapped this room. That means it just totally missed that area. And around the legs here, it did not get in tight on these legs at all. So we're gonna go ahead and sweep up the remainder of the coffee grounds and here in just a second we'll show you what the results are and compare compare the end results of the Neato D7 to the Roborock S4. And here are the unofficial results. The uh, Roborock S4 is here in the clear spoon. Uh, we measured that at a little over half of a teaspoon and this is right here the Neato D7, and as you can see, it's almost a full teaspoon. So it left about half, and I contribute what it left to not getting in the corner and not getting it against the wall and not getting around the legs of the hall tree. 
So it did appear that the Neato D7 did a better job picking up things in the middle of the floor, but it pretty much so failed miserably getting things around the edge of the room where it just flat missed. It's not that it went over it and didn't suck it up, it just flat missed it. So the winner here, the clear winner to me, is the Chinese Roborock S4. Stay tuned for my full review on both of these robots, and I'll let you know which one I think you should buy, which one I will be keeping, the other one will be leaving my house, the only one will stay, and uh, I'll give you my full analysis. If you would, please give me a subscribe, like, comment below if you have either of these vacuums, or if you're interested in it, you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them for you. Thanks and have a good one.